Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-lazina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you just as it has been prescribed on those before you so that you may achieve piety. There is no month in the Muslim world more special than the month of Ramadan, the month of mercy, the month of compassion, the, mon the month in which the gates of mercy are open to us and the Almighty God showers us with His Rahmah, with His forgiveness, with His compassion. Just hearing the word Ramadan opens your heart. It generates a feeling of peace in your heart. A feeling of serenity, tranquility. Hearing the month of Ramadan, the word itself gives you hope. It reminds you of forgiveness that in this holy month Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our sins. In fact, as one hadith states, one of the meanings of Ramadan is that it devours your sins. Just like fire devours wood, the month of Ramadan devours our sins. It purifies us from our sins. It's a beautiful month in which you see people are very excited, they are eager to be the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this holy month. You get flooded with messages, text messages, WhatsApp messages from all over the world. People congratulating you, sharing their excitement about this holy month. In fact, there are some people you have probably not heard from for six months, for a year, but when it comes to the night of Ramadan, you'll get a message from them, congratulating you on this month. It's truly a special occasion. It's a special gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this ummah. The month of Ramadan offers many benefits. One very important benefit that the month of Ramadan offers to us is that it gives us a break from our daily routine. For many people, you find that they need a break from their daily life, from their daily routine. Why is it that people love vacations? Don't we all love to vacation? Why? Of course you have fun, obviously, you do a lot of activities when you go on a vacation. But one primary reason is because it gives you a break from your daily routine. That's why millions of Americans, Canadians, in every country around the world, you find people looking forward to that vacation. They'll work hard six months and they have that vacation in their sight, waiting day by day for the time to come so they can go travel and enjoy their vacation. That's because a vacation offers you a break from your daily routine. Because having a daily routine sometimes becomes stressful. You feel like you're a robot. So you take that break. What does that break do to you? It energizes you. It refreshes you. That's why we all love it. Because it's so refreshing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan gives you an amazing vacation. At all levels if you really look at it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all gives you a break physically. We're addicted to all these foods around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a break. Give your digestive system a break. Be mindful of what you eat. So physically, we see that the month of Ramadan gives us a break from our daily routine of having those three meals and then those three snacks in between. It presents you a break. That in itself is healthy. 
The holy month of Ramadan is also a social vacation for many people. You meet people in the month of Ramadan you don't see really throughout the year. You see them very rarely. But in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity to meet friends, to meet family members, to socialize. This in itself refreshes our minds and souls. Spiritually, it's also a vacation for us. In this holy month, we take some time to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believe me, there are many people throughout the year, they're disconnected from their Lord, from their Creator. Especially from the Holy Qur'an. There are people who will only read the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. That gives you an opportunity to spiritually elevate yourself. Now the fourth type of break or opportunity that the holy month of Ramadan presents is one that is extremely important. The holy month of Ramadan offers us an opportunity, a moral, ethical opportunity to develop our moral character and to work on our habits, to develop good habits and to get rid of bad habits. This is something that we can achieve in the month of Ramadan. It's the perfect time for us to work on our character, to work on our moral standards, on our personality traits. There is no time more conducive, more appropriate, more effective to work on your personality traits than the month of Ramadan. And that's the beauty of the religion of Islam. You see that in the religion of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a schedule that really allows you to break from a daily routine. So you can always refresh yourself. You always energize yourself. Even simple matters like the timings of prayer. The timings of our salah shift, right? Every few days, you notice a 10 minute shift, a 15 minute shift. In the winter, for instance, you have Maghrib at around 5 p.m. And then every few days you notice a significant shift, a 15 minute shift, a 30 minute shift. Now the question is why? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do that? Why can't He keep the times of Salah consistent? Shouldn't they be consistent? Doesn't it make sense for the timings of prayer to be consistent? Why do you go through these shifts throughout the year? There are many benefits to that. But one benefit, brothers and sisters, is to help you break from that daily routine. Believers who are mindful of their salah are those who organize their schedule around the timings of salah. How many of us do that? When the next year is coming up and you're creating your schedule, you're organizing your plans. Do you think of the timings of salah? That's the last thing we think of, right? But those people who have a special relationship with God and they're so mindful of their salah, actually, when they're creating their schedule, they look at the times of salah. What am I doing at the times of salah? Do I make some time for my prayer? You know, if you just do that, how you will interact with your prayer? You'll, pray, you'll take prayer so much more seriously. You will find prayer an exciting daily act as opposed to a burden that you have to get out of your way. Make time for salah. Now the interesting thing about the timings of prayer is that they constantly shift. Now that could create a challenge. You have to keep readjusting your schedule, right? That's actually a plus. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is having these times of prayer change, the Almighty God is inviting you every few days, evaluate your schedule, evaluate your priorities. Because now that, let's say prayer after it was at 5 p.m. in the winter, it becomes 5.30. Now you have an extra 30 minutes before prayer. What should you do? What can you squeeze in? Now you have to think of your priorities. It seems that every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the human being, reflect on your schedule. Are you using your time wisely? 
What are your priorities? And the times of prayer are an invitation, a daily invitation for us to rethink our priorities. Are you doing that which is right? Or you're just stuck with a bad schedule? Because there are some people who develop a schedule for themselves and then they get stuck with it throughout the whole year. And it's a bad schedule, it's not a productive one. Even the times of Salah brothers and sisters invite you to rethink your schedule. Is this schedule working for you? Make adjustments, what's important? If something is important, give it priority. If it's not, scrap it from your schedule. The times of Salah, by having them shift and change, they teach us time management. And that's from the beautiful system of the religion of Islam. You know, many people, especially these days, they really think they're busy. I remember a few months ago, I was at a retreat, and this one, this young man, he shared his experience with time management. He said, I considered myself to be very, very busy. I really thought I did not have a single minute of free time. Until I heard a speech on time management, and this is what I did. At the retreat, we gave them some practical steps to effectively manage their time, those youth, and then we met them two, three weeks later to check on their progress. So two or three weeks later when we met with him, he said after carefully examining my schedule, I actually started to track what I would do. How did I spend my time? I would make a list of all the activities that I would do and how much time they would take. He said, I thought I was the busiest person on earth. I really didn't have time to scratch my head. But upon examining my schedule and actually writing it down on paper and keeping track of what I do, I realize that I have five hours of free time every day. Five hours of free time that I was wasting, I honestly wasn't doing anything. You know that extra free time that you have in between programs, in between work, errands to run, other activities. He said five hours every single day, I was wasting, but I was not aware of that. The times of salah, when you become mindful of them, and this is why it's so recommended to pray right on time. Some people say, why? What's this obsession with praying right on time? When I can pray between dhuhr and sunset, let's say. What's that obsession? Praying on time, brothers and sisters, teaches you to manage your time properly. It teaches you to evaluate your schedule, to organize your schedule every single day, and to always evaluate your priorities. And this is from the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see even with the times of prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an opportunity to break from our daily routine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.